Hi, I'm Gary, and this is my story. I've always had memories of going to some kind of clinic, or psychology, or psychiatry clinic, or something, when I was in primary school. I recall going every Monday afternoon for a few weeks during grade four, and I was happy to go. I enjoyed whatever, wherever I was going. I liked going there. Many years later, I asked my stepmother if I had gone to any kind of clinic or something like that. I was already in high school or even university at that time. And she smirked and said, Oh no, you never, you never went to anything like that. So I just left it at that. There's no point in asking more questions of her when she says something isn't true. She just doubles down. Then many years later, after I started to recover from amnesia and began to get began to recover memories of abuse, I still retained that those memories of going to that clinic. And eventually, in 2003, I decided to fly down to Melbourne and see if I could find that place. So I did that and searched around. I knew that it was in the domain and probably on Birdwood Drive. And I went down there and looked around and I found buildings that seemed to be familiar. And this was all going by the memories that I always had. I found that the that it was the old Melbourne Observatory, which was an astronomical observatory, and then after it was replaced by another one in another part of Australia, it was disused, and for a time it became a a, a clinic for mental health. So I went to the State Library and dug up information about that place and found that it was a government institution. And that meant that there's a chance that they had kept records and that I could find them by applying to to get those records by freedom of information laws. So I did that. I started that process before leaving Melbourne and... I was only there a few weeks. I applied for Freedom of Information to get the records back from my visit to that clinic. And I did get some records back, but not what I expected. The records contained two parts. One one part was the documents relating to me being referred to the clinic and the other part was the clinic notes and a couple of pieces of artwork from me at that time. Fourteen November nineteen seventy five School Medical Officer Dr. A. Seltzer Behavioural problems at school Hyperkinetic Intelligent little boy whose work is good but concentration and general cooperation is very spasmodic Home environment appears to be reasonably satisfactory but father is I can't read that line Seventeen November, nineteen seventy five. Concerning Gary Pfeiffer, Gary is a highly intelligent child with a behaviour problem. He has great difficulty communicating satisfactorily with his peers and has become very unpopular through habitually hurting children for no apparent reason. After such incidents, he is usually very tense, but seemingly unemotional and silent. He had to be removed from the straight grade two several months ago because of the disruptions he was causing. 
Often he deliberately set himself to tantalise the class teacher, and there were whole days when he refused to do any written work. He loves drawing and will spend hours by himself perfecting his pictures. Since coming into a smaller class, 24 grade 1, 2 and 3 children, he has improved noticeably, but still has a lot of difficulty. He is a dear little boy who seems unable to cope with his reactions or to order them appropriately, as the school will not always be able to provide him with this sort of an environment we feel that he urgently needs some assistance in learning to cope with himself and the situations of his daily life. Yours sincerely, Sister Eleanor, Class Teacher. 26 November 1975 Presenting Problem Bursting out in every direction, easily upset, Violent temper tantrums, hitting out at and kicking other children. Doesn't join in to play with other children. Schoolwork very good. Seems a bright child, although often appears preoccupied or switches off and becomes inaccessible. Moods are extremes. Fifteen December nineteen seventy five Gary bright, active and friendly presented as a very capable child. He is well coordinated. He favours his left eye, yet writes right handed, writes well and draws expressively with colour. He likes school and enjoys reading and writing, has friends but admits fighting and hitting a lot. Doesn't know why. Dislikes home because of his elder sister who bosses him. He admits to fighting a lot with her and others at school. Presenting problem of mother. Management of Gary's tantrum and antisocial behaviour. Hitting and annoying other children. Family. Father, affectionate, but not home very much. When Gary throws tantrums, he hits him. Consequently, Gary doesn't throw many tantrums in front of him. Mother, has the responsibility of day-to-day -day discipline. She tries to reason with Gary, yet admits to getting very frustrated when he tantrums. He does this to her much more than to his father. She works and children are home before her after school. Sister has always tantrumed. However, she is less frequent and much more uncontrolled and for seemingly no reason. When she has a tantrum, parents have to pacify her, stay with her for a long time, etc. She is bossy and mother admits she gives Gary a hard time. Gary. Mother thinks Gary may have learned the behaviour from his sister. From her discussion, it appears, he is selective about who he tantrums in front of, i.e. mother, sister, not father, nor his teacher. He is also selective about what he damages, if anything, during a tantrum. At school, he channels frustration and anger at other children, he annoys others. Action. Mother is to make a list of tantrums and how they occur of both sister and brother. From this information, plan a method of tantrum control by changing behaviour patterns. Socialise Gary by rewarding good behaviour and extinguish his antisocial behaviour by 1. Ensuring his level of frustration and anger is reduced, especially re-sister-brother relationship. And two, punishment applied appropriately. Prefer home management by mother and father essential. Dosage recommended by Dr. Chandler, emapramine 25mg 
1am, 1pm. 15 December 1975. Phoned Gary's teacher, Sister Eleanor. Gary's main problem is social interaction. He can't handle average, 30 to 35, class size. This year he has been put into a class with fewer students. He is often non-cooperative and hurts other children indiscriminately. Doesn't know why. When he is happy, he is stupid and annoying. When he is morose, he hurts others. Sister Eleanor says he is very intelligent, has a reading age two years over, very good at drawing, but his attention span is very poor and frustration level low. He has improved slightly when several girls in the class have befriended him. To know someone likes him is a pleasant surprise to him. Re, parents and sister. A lot of the trouble is in family relationships. He has told his teacher he hates his sister. Mother is unable to cope with both. Both parents work long hours. Sister and Gary are home 3.30 p.m. Parents don't get home till after 6.30 p.m. Mother unable to teach daughter how to use knife and fork while eating. Will visit family 16 December 1975. Cancelled by Mrs. Pfeiffer. Next appointment for mother, sister and Gary. Monday 2.30 p.m. 22 December 1975. Mother forgot to attend. Eighth January nineteen seventy six Family Visit Present Father, Mother, Sandra and Gary Father was quiet and cooperative, mother more talkative, somewhat defensive on how they manage Gary. Father considers that Gary is improving. In time he will be better. He, father, works long hours and does not see Gary much, and considers that this could have an adverse effect on Gary's behaviour. Mother also works full time. She seems confused about her treatment of Gary. On one occasion she claimed she was consistent, yet on another she confessed that she wasn't. Father criticised her for inconsistency and for being too lenient. He, in turn, was criticised by her for not involving himself with this area. There is obviously a difference of opinion on how the children should be raised. It appears, however, that the mother is charged with the responsibility. However, because both work full time and long hours, the children are left alone for a considerable amount of time. That is, each school day from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. and during school holidays they go either to camp or attend day centres. Sandra, the sister, was quiet but friendly. She spoke well of Gary but claimed he continually picked fights with her. The attitude of the family to Gary seems one of love but also an inability to cope with his tantrums and tantalising behaviour. During the time of the family discussion, I was conscious of Gary not being involved. I endeavoured to include him on related family matters, but he giggled inappropriately and sucked his finger. However, his parents did talk about Gary as if he wasn't there, and at one stage I remarked on this, as I could well understand Gary's embarrassment. We then tried to include Gary in the group. He volunteered to show me the plane models he made. He does not speak very much, and it is hard, therefore, to talk to him. However, 
the plane models and other items he has made show considerable skill and persistence in a difficult task which is enjoyed. Mother claimed that the medication had an adverse effect on Gary. His bad behaviour increased, that is, nastiness. Contact will be made with Dr Chandler re this matter. Appointment made to see family on Thursday 15th January 5.30pm. 15 January 1976 Visited the home at 5.30pm. Nobody home. Phoned that evening 9pm. Father answered. Apologised for not being there earlier, but said he had to work late and that he had just arrived home. Said Gary was better. Can't see much wrong with him. He will grow out of it. He just hates to be told. Mother also spoke over the phone. She apologised and said that she too worked late and that Gary was waiting for me in the back room sleep out. I made an appointment to see her at her home 9.30am next morning. 16th January 1976 Visited 9.30am Mother returned back from work to see me. I sat with Mother, Sandra and Gary as they had breakfast. Watched family in process. Gary does seem to do what he likes. Nearly demolished a tin of Ovaltine, spilled it all over the table. Mother ignored him. He is very active, difficult to talk sensibly with, and some of his behaviour was tantalising to his mother. That is, ran around the house hiding from her when she wanted to get him ready for the play centre. She remarked that he often does this when she is in a hurry to get to work. When he refused to obey his mother and return a towel to the bathroom, she did not insist or chasten him. She said she knows because of experience, that if she made an issue of this, he would scream and be upset and uncontrollable all day. Mother does need and would appreciate assistance in her day-to-day -day management of Gary. She does seem concerned. She did say that since she has been to the clinic, she is more aware of what she could be doing and believes that Gary's behaviour is better. She is devoting more time to him, trying to be more consistent. However, she believes that she cannot restrict her working hours to be at home with her children after school. She wishes to attend observatory clinic herself to obtain more help in management of Gary, and since Gary's immediate need is to improve social behavioural skills, he would be better placed under supervision in a group at the clinic. Judith agreed to see mother re-management problems. Christine agreed to see Gary with the view to including him in her playgroup. Dr Chandler prescribed Malorel for Gary. I will visit family on Wednesday 21st January AM to deliver Gary's medication and confirm their next appointment with the clinic. Note in margin, mother gave me one letter from Gary's teacher, two report from school medical officer, refer back section. Tuesday 27th January 3pm. Both mother and father need assistance in managing a very active child who finds it very difficult to relate to others. Gary himself requires every assistance to learn to cope with his frustrations and get along with other children and his parents in a more meaningful and appropriate way. 27th January 1976 Did not attend. New appointment made 3 to 76 6 p.m. First March 1976 
Gary appears to be a very anxious boy. He needed a good deal of encouragement to even look in the toy cupboard. When he did, he chose a building set to play with, and this absorbed his interest for the entire session. He barely acknowledged my presence at most times, answering most of my questions with monosyllable or very brief answers. At times, however, he would look up and smile at me as if there was some feeling of warmth toward me. But this behaviour, anxious and withdrawn, continued to be incongruous with this idea. Plans. Contact with the school. Explore the possibility of placing Gary in a group as his main need at the moment is in his interaction with peers. 5th April 1976 Gary to attend children's group with Judith and myself weekly. Mrs Pfeiffer to someone's group with Arnold and Lorraine. 31st May 1976 Phone call to Sister Eleanor, Gary's teacher. She feels there has been some improvement in Gary. He still has difficulty concentrating in the classroom, even when he is motivated to do his work. He can achieve in 15 minutes what it will take him three hours to do during class when kept back in one-to-one -one situation after school. 7th June 1976 1. Reason for referral. Observation of behaviour for us in consultation with school. 2. Behaviour in groups. A. Relationships with peers. Kept self apart from others mainly. Sensitive to others' feelings, but did not. Mm, can't read it. Received a lot of provocation from others, but managed it well by laughing and joining in, but extricated himself fairly quickly. Internalized his feelings under provocation rather than externalized. B. Relationships with therapists. Cooperative, like to join in discussion with us, able to verbalize feelings, read topics and self to us. Probably related more to us than other children. Pleasant and sociable, no limit testing. 3. Participation in group. Happier when engaged in own activities, but able to join in cooperatively. 4. General comments. No physical aggression shown in any sessions. Mrs. Pfeiffer and Gary unable to attend further group sessions. So, continue some contact with family. So, the record showed that I went to that clinic at the end of 1975 and partway through 1976. But that didn't coincide with the memory that I had from 1977 in grade four. So I have some great information about how I was as a child. But I still don't know where I went in grade four. Where did I go every Monday afternoon? That's something that I don't know yet.